There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. This chemical equation here might look familiar. CH, C8H14 is octane, and O2 is obviously oxygen. And this is the combustion reaction when octane combusts with oxygen or combines with oxygen to form carbon dioxide, so CO2, carbon dioxide, and water. Now, if this doesn't look familiar at all, it might be worth to look at this link again. This is what I covered a couple of months ago. And this is to do with incomplete and complete combustion because it would come in handy for this dot point because it's going to be related to this dot point. So if you want, you can watch this before you watch this video. But what I drew here is I drew a car, a very, very nice attempt at a car. Actually, I forgot to draw the road, which would be here. But um, I've got a car and it's got its exhaust right here. So this is where all the gas will come out of it. And we have an engine, which would usually be somewhere a bit here. And with that engine, you obviously have two parts. You've got, this is supposed to, I'm not sure if you can read that, it says octane. So you've got the octane, which is this part here, which comes into this part of the engine. And then you have oxygen, which is this part here, which comes into that part of the engine. And then what happens is they combust, which means they combine. Right? That's what we call combustion. This part here, this arrow is combustion. They combust and they produce energy, right? So energy is also produced, so plus energy, and its energy will drive the car. Now, if you look at the actual products, these are the products of this reaction is carbon dioxide and water. So what's going to come out of the exhaust would be carbon dioxide and water. The so carbon dioxide itself is not super good for the environment. Obviously, carbon dioxide causes global warming or contributes to global warming, but it's still better than some of the other ones. And water itself is obviously relatively harmless. So in this case, if this were, hap were to happen on a regular basis, whilst it would still pollute the actual environment, it wouldn't be super bad because carbon dioxide isn't super pollutant. Now, the reason why I mention this is because it says describe, so it says describe as a verb, describe an example of a chemical reaction such as combustion. So this is an example of combustion where reactants from different products uh, form different products under different conditions and does and thus was, would need monitoring. Right? So here, these are our product, uh, sorry, our reactants. We've got octane, we've got oxygen. Here we have carbon dioxide and we have water. Now I'll show you what happens if we have a different type of condition. Because inside an actual car, it's a bit trickier because inside the car, what you'll find is, or inside the engine, this is our engine right here. In the engine itself is inside the car. And first of all, there's not much air that goes inside the car. I mean, it's, it's quite sticky there, which means there's not much oxygen or there's often not enough oxygen. And it's also really hot. so. Generally, an engine would be quite hot. And the reason why that's a problem is because if you see here, if you look at this equation, octane plus 25 moles of oxygen. Now, we don't usually have that much oxygen. We usually have less oxygen. So here we have 2 plus 13. We don't have 25, we only have 13. This is more realistic, right? This is sort of more how it actually is as opposed to what we'd like it to be. So in our realistic engine, we have less oxygen, which can be a pretty big problem. Because now our product, these are our products again. This is not carbon dioxide. This is CO, that's carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide. Now, carbon dioxide was kind of a pollutant that contributes to global warming. Carbon monoxide actually can kill us. It can um, make us suffocate. It deals with our respiratory system, our breathing system. So carbon monoxide is, is really deadly. It's quite poisonous. And obviously water itself is the same. So in this case, we have, we've got here, we've got 16 moles of carbon dioxide. Here we have eight moles of carbon monoxide. And the, the dot point itself says, describe an example of a chemical reaction such as a combustion where reactants from different form different products under different conditions. I see that our, we've got octane and oxygen in both these examples. But in the one example, we have more oxygen and we form the product of carbon dioxide. As in the other example, we have less oxygen and we form the 
carbon monoxide. Right? So these are different products, even though we have the same reactants. So that's what that part means. We have the same reactants, but we have different products. And the reason why is because we have these different reactions, uh, different conditions, sorry. In this, in this case, not enough oxygen. And what also is important is, remember, what does the atmosphere have? It has mostly oxygen, but more than oxygen, it also has nitrogen. Now, nitrogen itself, NO2, which is nitrogen gas, that's no problem at all. But once it gets inside of the engine, what will happen is, because it's so hot, right? we need to have high temperatures for nitrogen gas to combine with oxygen to form something called nitrogen monoxide. Now, nitrogen monoxide, if the temperatures remain high for a long enough time, will then combine with even more oxygen to form nitrogen dioxide. And remember, what was this? Nitrogen dioxide? This was caused acid rain. So this is really poisonous. Again, these are different. So usually we might have, you know, these, these reactants here. We've got, usually we always have nitrogen and oxygen in the air, right? So that's, that's usual. These reactants are always in the air. But if the conditions are different, so if there's no high temperatures, then we won't form carbon uh, nitrogen monoxide or nitrogen dioxide. Without high temperatures, we won't form that. But because we have high temperatures, so the, the condition is different, we form these pollutants. So again, that's how we have same reactants, but different type of products, depending on the conditions, depending on the temperature in this case. Normal temperatures, we don't form it. High temperatures, we form it. Same with the octane. Usually, octane combines with oxygen to form carbon monoxide, but if we don't have enough oxygen, so if the condition is different, we will form not carbon dioxide, but carbon monoxide. So in this case, that was at least the first part. The where reactants form different products under different conditions and does need monitoring. So obviously, if for example, we produce carbon monoxide, which is really poisonous for us, which can kill us, or we produce lots of acid rain, that means we need to, we need to monitor this. We need to f make sure we don't pollute too much of it. That's why if, for example, in cities that have lots of cars driving around, we'll make sure we monitor the air because we fear not that we're producing too much carbon dioxide, that's also a problem, but we fear that the cars might produce too much carbon monoxide and too much nitrogen dioxide. Right? So these different conditions means we need to monitor it to make sure that we can, that we can keep on control of the situation. And the whole sampling, so the analytical part, which is usually done by an analytical chemist, is done using the chromatography, the liquid gas chromatography. I'm not going to go over again how that works exa exactly because I've done that in the first video. But it, this kind of device would be used to figure out what the composition of the atmosphere is. If there's carbon monoxide and nitrogen dioxide in the atmosphere, or if it's mostly carbon dioxide. Now, once we've figured out that there's pollution, which is done by an analytical chemist, so an analytical chemist is the person who will figure out if there's a problem when it comes to pollution. But that information is then used by, for example, a research chemist to come up with new technology. So this is a research chemist that has developed a converter, so research chemist. So the information from the analytic chemist goes to research chemists. So what you can see here is even if we have you know, too much carbon monoxide and, and nitrogen dioxide being produced, with this converter, what happens is you have carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, sorry, nitrogen monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, and carbon monoxide all going in from here. And what comes out is water and carbon dioxide. So this converter allows us to make all those pollutants make less pollutant sort of substances. Right? So this is the collaboration between an analytic, analytic chemist who is told the, given the information to a research chemist, who then has to come up with a new idea of how we can make it less pollutant. Right? So I'll quickly go over the top one again. Describe an example of a chemical reaction such as combustion, where reactions form different products under different conditions and thus would need monitoring. Right? So usually, if we have enough oxygen, we have octane and oxygen going for those reactants, making carbon dioxide and water.
but if the if the conditions are different, so if we don't have as much oxygen, which we usually don't have in an engine, because the engine has less air in it, and it usually would be in the atmosphere. So in those different conditions where we have less oxygen, what happens if we, is we don't produce carbon dioxide, we produce a different product called carbon monoxide. And this needs monitoring because carbon di carbon monoxide, sorry, carbon monoxide is poisonous. So we need to monitor it to make sure that its levels aren't too high. And the same thing with nitrogen. Usually nitrogen and oxygen are in the air and nothing happens. They don't combine because they don't combine unless the temperatures are high. But in the engine, there are different conditions. The same kind of products will actually form nitrogen monoxide, nitrogen dioxide because of these high temperatures and these differing conditions. And again, this needs to be having, this needs to be monitored because nitrogen monoxide and dioxide can produce acid rain, which is deadly. And these are two examples of things we need to monitor to make sure that the pollution isn't too bad. But the good thing is with this co collaboration between scientists, the analytic chemists will figure out that there's a pollution problem and the research chemists will come up with a new solution to the, the problem and will make sure that the pollution grows down, which this converter helps us to do. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.